Okay, I'm going to take you guys on a journey today. And like all journeys in life, there's going to be ups and downs, highs and lows. You're going to like certain parts and dislike other parts. In other words, you will love me and hate me today all at once. But if you listen with an open mind, I promise at the end of the speech, the love will outweigh the hate. The first 30 minutes will be very intense. I'm going to make you feel angry, frustrated, and guilty. Fortunately, the last 15 minutes will be like a comedy roast, so we're going to laugh and giggle. You guys are getting roasted, by the way. So I'm going to speak for around 45 minutes, and then we'll do a Q&A session after, so hold your questions until the end. Right now, I want you to think about how you would feel if the moment you were born, someone else had already planned the day of your execution. Because that's what it's like to be a cow a pig, a chicken, or a turkey on this planet. They're not born free. They're born to be murdered, even though freedom is supposed to be a birthright, a God-given right. I mean, no God would be a slave master, a torturer, and a killer of his animals, his babies. If he was, then he wouldn't be God. He'd be the devil. If that statement shocks you or brings up feelings of animosity towards me, the problem isn't with me and what I've just said. The problem is that humans have victimized animals to such a degree that they aren't even considered victims. They aren't even considered at all. They're nothing. They don't count. They don't matter. They're commodities like TV sets and cell phones. We've actually turned animals into inanimate objects, sandwiches and shoes. It is the greatest magic trick ever performed, the animation switch. And besides the money made from selling their flesh and skin and the things that come out of their bodies, there's not even decent value on them as inanimate objects. The American flag, for example, which is nothing but a piece of fabric. The Bible, which is nothing but a book comprised of ink and paper, stir up more emotions than the murder of animals. If there were a barbecue near campus today, and people were cooking up steaks and hamburgers, man, there'd be a party. People would actually celebrate the cow who was killed the person who killed the cow, and the chef that seasoned her dead body. But if someone poured gasoline on the flag or a Bible, struck a match and set it on fire, Lord have mercy. There'd be an angry mob ready to kill somebody. These lifeless, inanimate objects, the flag and the Bible, are more sacred than animals, living, feeling, breathing beings. Animals are victims, the most oppressed ever. And if you're having a tough time grasping this fact, maybe it's because the only time you ever come into contact with cows and chickens and turkeys is when they're cut up and cooked on your dinner table. So, good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> My name is Gary Yurofsky. I'm a vegan animal liberation activist. I'm not a politician and I'm not a salesperson. That means I got no lies to tell you and no books and no DVDs to sell you. Before I continue, I want to define the word vegan for everybody, V-E-G-A-N. Vegans, just like vegetarians, do not consume the meat of any land or marine animal. Vegans, however, unlike vegetarians, also refrain from eating cheese, milk, eggs, honey, any animal product whatsoever. We also don't wear animal skin. No fur, leather, wool, silk, or down. I want to let you know that I was not raised vegan. I ate meat, cheese, milk, and eggs for around 25 years. And like most people, I always thought that I cared about animals because I loved dogs and cats or chipmunks and squirrels. 
Until one day, after seeing some animals backstage at a circus, chained up and caged up, I not only realized that I was witnessing a slave show, I realized I was a hypocrite, a bigot, a speciesist. Just like a racist who believes that their race is more special and more important than all the other races, a speciesist believes that humans are more special and more important than all the animals and therefore have the right to enslave and kill any species they choose. But if you honestly place yourself in the animal's position, looking at this issue from the victim's point of view, being denied your freedom and the right to live a long, healthy life, and then imagine yourself confined in a concentration camp truck on your way to a slaughterhouse so someone could slice your throat and cut you up into pieces, I'm pretty sure you would understand why the psychotic addictions of meat, cheese, milk, and eggs must be abolished. If you eat animals and the things that come out of animals, you are intentionally causing pain and suffering and polluting your soul with the blood of innocent beings. Humanity's main focus should always be extending compassion to others, not engaging in rituals and traditions that are based on cruelty. There's a massacre taking place right now. It's the world's largest and longest running massacre of all time because every second of every minute of every hour of every day, female animals are raped to impregnate them so we can steal their babies, separate families from each other, so we can kill them and sell their flesh and skin. If that's not the definition of injustice, of an atrocity, then I'd like to know what is. You do realize that if you went to the nearest cow or chicken slaughterhouse and removed the animals and then replaced them with human beings, all of a sudden, it's a tragedy. Auschwitz is resurrected. Slave ships sail again. And don't think I'm the first person to make these valid comparisons. Civil rights activist Dick Gregory once said, when I look at animals held captive by circuses, I think of slavery. Animals and circuses represent domination and oppression. They wear the same chains and shackles. Isaac Bashevis Singer, who escaped Nazi-occupied Poland, once condemned our speciesistic world when he said, what do they know? All these scholars, all these philosophers, all the leaders of the world, they have convinced themselves that man, the worst transgressor of all the species, is the crown of creation. And all the animals were made for us to be food and pelts, to be tormented and exterminated. In relation to animals, all humans are Nazis. For the animals, it is an eternal Treblinka. Now I know these statements sound pretty harsh and controversial to you, but that doesn't mean they aren't true. The fact that anyone would fight against veganism, against animal liberation, which means you are against compassion, just proves how completely irrational meat, dairy, and egg eaters can be. Vegans are only asking you to change what you eat, not who you are. Stay Jewish, Christian, or Catholic. Stay Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, atheist, agnostic, stay left or right in politics. If you honestly place yourself in the animal's position, there's no way you can justify the things that we do to them and walk away from today's speech saying that you don't care. The ethical compass that most people use to gauge right from wrong is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Since no one in this room wants to be treated the way we treat cows and pigs and chickens and turkeys and fish, 
There's no need to search for an excuse today not to be vegan. 60 billion land animals, 90 billion marine animals are killed every year on this planet for a sandwich, for addictions of greed and gluttony. What kind of society justifies mass murder? Stop thinking that animals aren't victims because they aren't human. It's the mindset of the victimizer that's wrong, and this is what needs to be examined and corrected because it never changes no matter who the victim is. Have you noticed it always goes something like this? No, you don't count. No, you don't matter. No, I'm more important than you. No, I laugh at the suffering I inflict on you. I'll kill you and your family whenever I want, however I want. Prove to me why I should be kind to you. It is not your right to deny someone else their freedom and their rights. So you can harm them, enslave them, and kill them. That's not what rights are about. That's injustice. There is no counter-argument to veganism. Accept it. You can't be right all the time. Apologize for the way you've been living. Make amends and evolve. Move forward. Now, all throughout history, there's a pretty good reason why most people, most good people, have always been on the wrong side of what's right. And that's because the truth has never been accepted overnight. It always has to pass through three stages. First, it is mocked and ridiculed. Yeah, people always make fun of something they don't understand, especially when it involves being kind to someone else. Second stage, denial and violent opposition. People refuse, people refuse to believe there's an atrocity taking place. And they fight tooth and nail to keep the status quo as is. Third stage, acceptance. There is no longer need to explain it because we all get it. Now unfortunately, it usually takes hundreds, sometimes thousands of years for the truth to pass through these stages. I'm going to try and do it today in around 45 minutes. And in order for the truth to be accepted and understood, we do have to witness the atrocities. The five and a half minute video we're about to watch, that footage was taken throughout America, Britain, and Israel. And if you feel the need to turn away or close your eyes during this video, you should probably ask yourself a question. If it's not good enough for my eyes, then why is it good enough for my stomach? And before I press play, I have to say something about all this humane meat, humane milk, humane eggs bullshit that's going on in our society right now. That stuff does not exist under any circumstances whatsoever. Even when animals reside in cage-free, free-range, grass-fed, local, organic, antibiotic-free facilities. By definition alone, slavery and slaughter are radically cruel and can never be humane. So don't be so gullible with slick marketing ads that want to convince you that animals enjoy being on the menu. As if they're all saying, hey, stab me. Yeah, kill me. Sure, take everything from me. Because that's why I'm here. Just for you. And if for some reason my aforesaid words in this video we're about to watch, aren't proof enough of the terrorism claims that I am hurling at the meat, dairy, and egg industries. Maybe the dismembered bodies of 150 billion animals annually could count as proof.
am forever embarrassed to be a human being. To stand upright like that's something to be proud of. Did you ever wonder why McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's never use those images in their TV ads? No severed heads, dismembered limbs, corpses, blood, guts. Always showing you a happy, singing, smiling, cartoon caricature instead. Lying to you, brainwashing you, and programming you not to care about things you would normally care about, things that you used to care about when you were young, innocent, and uncorrupted by society's lies. So how come if the animals in that video were dogs and cats, people would be outraged? And if they were kids, the world would scream bloody murder. Instead, the victims are cows and chickens and fish, and all of a sudden it's okay. So I am a little confused here. Is the slaughterhouse the problem? Or is the problem just who's getting killed in the slaughterhouse? Because it's a house of slaughter. Why does it even exist? Especially when peace begins at the dinner table with what you put into your body on a daily basis. Good people don't talk about kindness. They practice it. And they certainly don't pray about love on the weekends for an hour or two. They actually give it all the time. I know you have the capability of understanding right from wrong because you all hate people who harm children. Why not hate people who harm animals? It's hypocritical. Why protect one victim and then violate and ignore the other victim when neither victim wants nor deserves the abuse? They just wish it would end. Stop praising the innocence in children and then ignoring and making fun of the exact same innocence in the animals. And everyone has to stop making these idiotic claims that humans are the only ones who are capable of being rational and aware, and that animals operate on instinct only. Can I explain something to everybody in a pretty simple way? Breathing is instinctive. Everything else is a thought attached to an action. It's not an accident that animals can build a home, if given a chance, and return to that home. If they can care for their babies, if they can find shade on a sunny day, or seek warmth when it's cold, figure out when to sleep or stay awake, locate water to drink, fly in a bee formation, hide when they don't want to be seen, defend their territories, all these actions prove beyond a reasonable doubt that animals have the capacity of being rational and aware. The human animal is the only animal that spends the majority of time not thinking. Eating at steak and shake in the Golden Corral and Applebee's and Long John Silver's is not rational thought. But this isn't a competition of intelligence or awareness. This is about justice. When we were kids, each and every single one of us, when our parents or our grandparents sat us down and read us a story, that story was about animals. And when that story was read to us, we smiled and giggled uncontrollably. We even mimicked the noises they made, their language. We wanted to play with them so badly, not have someone shove a knife in their throat and cut them up into pieces. What happened to you along the way? Who stole your compassion, your empathy, and your conscience? Because they stole mine too. Yeah, they got me good. But I got it all back. And that's the only reason I'm here today. To try and help you get yours back as well. All I'm asking you to do is something normal and natural. Eat what comes from the earth. What the ground pushes up and what the trees drop down and give us. 
Every single vitamin, mineral, and nutrient that exists, protein, calcium, iron, potassium, all the B vitamins, they have an original source and it ain't the animals. I know you're aware that people eat animals after the animals have already eaten things that come from the earth. People eat cows after the cows have eaten up all the grass, some of the soil, then we ship them off to a feedlot and we feed them most of our corn, wheat, oats, and soy. Then we take even more of the corn, the wheat, the oats, and the soy. We shove it down the throats of pigs, chickens, and turkeys. Stop filtering your nutrients through someone else's body. It's irrational. Go to those sources directly. Fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, legumes like lentils. These things cannot harm you, cannot cause a disease, and most importantly, they never intentionally harm anyone else in the process. But when we consume what walks and what flies and what swims, that is abnormal. Where does everybody think diseases come from? Broccoli? Asparagus? Blueberries? Strawberries? Peaches, nectarines, grapes, bananas? Avocados, onions, tomatoes? cucumbers, and I'm well aware that many other factors can lead to a disease. Stress is an absolute killer. So is lack of exercise and lack of sleep and excessive amounts of empty refined carbohydrates like white rice and white bread and sugar. But animal products because of animal protein remain the main cause of every major disease. Check out the All About Veganism section on my adapt.org website. I now have links to more than 50 medical studies proving that veganism by far is the healthiest way to live. And let me destroy these lies about B12 and the hereditary factor for disease. Now first, B12 comes from bacteria that live in our mouth and intestines. That bacteria also exists in the mouth and the intestines of all the animals and in the soil. So you can let your body produce B12 naturally, which is what we and the animals always do. Or you can eat some unwashed organic vegetables once in a while with some dirt still on them like carrots and celery and get all the B12 you will ever need. If you check out the vitamin section on my website, I have links to three essays written by doctors, including John McDougall, one of the world's top medical professionals, who states that vegans have a less than one in a million chance of ever developing a disease from a B12 deficiency. You can also see my blood work in that section, because I got tired of people saying stuff to me over the years like, hey, Yurofsky, bet you got no B12 levels. You've been vegan way too long. I bet your B12 levels suck. So in October 2012, I went and got everything tested. Your B12 level is supposed to be between 271 and 870. I checked in at 543. At that time, 16 years vegan. Now 17 years vegan. Still haven't taken one single pill. Because I don't believe you can find health in a pill. But with this being said, if you decide you want to become vegan today, and I hope everybody does, and your parents or your doctor insist that you take a B12 supplement, then do it. Who gives a shit? It takes two seconds. I'm not an anti-vitamin activist. I'm an anti-cruelty to animals activist. I'm just trying to give you some good information so you can save yourself 25 bucks on a bottle of pills that you don't even need. And the other myth is that we can't do anything about our health because it's already programmed into our genes. Hey Gary, that was a great speech, man, but heart disease runs in my family. Breast cancer keeps running in my family. Nonsense. Don't you know what runs in people's families? You should by now. Meat, cheese, milk, and eggs. It doesn't count as hereditary when our parents and our grandparents and our great-grandparents ate the same disgusting, unhealthy things that we still eat. Actually, that's the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and always expecting a different result. Baldness is hereditary. You can thank your mom's dad for that. Eye colors in the genes. Cystic fibrosis, Down syndrome, that's in the genes. Heart disease and cancers are not. 
Now, I want to break this down for you even further. I'm going to show you exactly who's been lying to you all these years. Because according to the dairy industry itself, the main reasons they exist are so you can get protein and calcium. Now, unless you plan on starving yourself to death, which I do not recommend, it's impossible not to get protein. You couldn't even do it if you tried, because every single plant on this planet contains protein. Even fruit is around 5% protein. Vegetables have plenty of protein, nuts and seeds and grains. Beans and lentils, by the way, 25% protein. One cup of tempeh. Tempeh is a meaty-like substance made from fermented soy. One cup has more than 30 grams of protein. And the seaweed spirulina, 79% protein. So again, unless you're planning on a starvation diet, it's impossible not to get your protein intake for the day. As for calcium, which is abundant in the plant kingdom, like every nutrient that exists, that's where nutrients come from. Plants, not from the animals. Best sources of calcium, by the way, are almonds, broccoli, parsley, and sea vegetables, seaweed. But check out that vitamin section on my website. I now have a detailed list of the best sources for more than 100 nutrients. But the dairy industry, boy, they love to say, eat some cheese, drink some cow's milk, strong bones, strong body. Milk does a body good. Happy cows, got milk. Most people eat dairy products three times a day. I mean, you can't even get a sandwich anymore without cheese. People put cheese and meat on salads too. And by the way, if you're eating a salad with meat and cheese on it, it's not a salad. Stop that shit. It's a sandwich without the bread, all chopped up in little pieces put inside of a bowl. Spare me the chicken salad, tuna salad crap. A salad is comprised of vegetables and plant products only. And if you're lucky enough to find this vegetable only salad somewhere, what's the first thing people have to say to the waiter like an addict? some ranch or some Thousand Island. Can you please pour some dairy all over these vegetables for me? So, in our society, where everybody is hooked on dairy, I mean hooked, like it's been laced with cocaine and Percocet, most people can't even fathom one meal, let alone one day or a lifetime without cheese. In fact, if you want to know why vegetarians never become vegans, Cheese on a baked potato, cheese on a broccoli, cheese on everything and say even lactose intolerant people eat cheese. So we have all these animal products coming into our diets for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day without exception. Snacks too. Did you ever wonder why nearly every other commercial on TV has something to do with pills and illnesses? And why our parents and grandparents have to take multivitamins every day? And why there's a drugstore, drugstore, on every street corner pushing vitamins and pharmaceuticals on everybody. After all, we do live in a meat, dairy, and egg-eating world. You think maybe people need pills and people become sick because meat, cheese, milk, and eggs are pure and utter garbage with very little to no nutritional value whatsoever? And let me mention something quickly about the environment and world hunger. Because a lot of people keep telling me that they care more about humans than animals. So they can never become vegan. As if eating some tofu today instead of a hamburger is going to mess up your human rights activities for the day. This is especially puzzling to me in many ways. But mainly because meat, dairy, and egg eating societies are the main cause of world hunger as they continuously feed 50% of the world's crops. Back to the 60 billion land animals that we kill in the meat, dairy, and egg industries every year, and the tens of billions of marine animals that we kill on fish farms every year, instead of using those crops to feed seven and a half billion people. You can do the math on this one yourself. You don't have to be Einstein to figure out this equation. Every two to three seconds, some human on this planet dies from starvation. That's a fact. Here's another fact. Chickens, turkeys, pigs, and cows, they never miss a meal. Meat, dairy, and egg eating is the worst form of human 
and animal abuse. And when it comes to pure environmental destruction, air pollution, water pollution, deforestation, nothing competes with animal agriculture. There is no such thing as a meat, dairy, or egg-eating environmentalist. But check out the two environmental sections on my website for more detailed info on that, because I want to spend a little more time right now condemning the dairy industry. Because when it comes to cruelty, I think there's more cruelty in a piece of cheese, in a glass of milk, in yogurt, than there is in meat. First of all, most hamburger meat comes from the dairy industry. When cows can't produce huge amounts of milk after three to seven years, slaughterhouse. If given a chance, God forbid, cows can live to be 18 to 25. And cows are like all female mammals. And listen, I don't mean to be speaking down to anybody if that's how you're taking this. It's just that when I'm talking to addicts about their addictions, addicts have a tendency to become irrational and illogical. I know you understand this concept. You just never think about it when it comes to the animals. Female mammals can only produce and give milk during or after pregnancy. So once a year, every cow on every dairy farm is raped to impregnate her. Long steel device shoved in her vagina to inject her with bull semen. And sometimes they just use a bare hand to do it. Got to get that milk flow going somehow. And later on, after she gives birth, her newborn baby is stolen away. A couple months later, they repeat the process all over again. One of the worst screams I have ever heard. And I've heard them all firsthand. I've been to slaughterhouses, vivisection labs, behind the scenes of every circus and rodeo that ever passed through Michigan. One of the worst screams I've ever heard, stealing newborn babies from their mothers. And why would they steal newborn babies? from their moms? Well, the dairy industry can't have calves sucking up all that milk that was meant for them when they'd rather sell it to you instead. Every time you have dairy, some calf does not. And mother cows make milk for one reason, for their babies. Case closed forever. No debate, no discussion, the jury is in. They certainly don't make milk for baby elephants and baby orangutans and baby hedgehogs, baby rabbits, baby rats, baby humans, adolescent humans, or adult humans. This body of ours has absolutely no need for cow milk, like it has absolutely no need for giraffe milk, and zebra milk, and rhinoceros milk, and hippopotamus milk, camel milk, goat milk, horse milk, pig milk, dog milk, or cat milk. The only milk that we ever need comes from our own mother, our species. That's it. And after the first few years of life, we never need one drop of milk ever again. But if you want to include some kind of, some kind of milk in your diet like I do, it is finally time for some good news. Because I can see it on some of your faces. I can sense it in the room. You're like, damn, did you drive all the way from Michigan to New York to verbally abuse us? Lighten up, man. Actually, I came here today to show you what you've been missing because everyone's got those blinders on nice and tightly. Everything you like to eat and drink, the taste, the smell, and the texture, we got a vegan version for you. It's been veganized. There's soy milk, rice milk, almond milk, hemp milk, coconut milk, oat milk, hazelnut milk, sunflower milk, and flax milk. You can mimic the taste and texture of meat with tofu and tempeh and seitan. Plus, we got all those vegan meats made from plant products, not from chemicals. What about ethnic food? Middle Eastern food, falafel, tabbouleh, hummus, majedra, lentil soup, Asian food, stir-fried vegetables and tofu. Just remember when ordering Asian dishes, always order those dishes without fish sauce added to it. Indian food, aloo gobi. It's cauliflower, potatoes, and curry. It's delicious. Chana masala, chickpeas, and tomatoes. Mexican food, rice and beans and guacamole. Italian food, pasta, spaghetti, and pizzas without cheese. Unless you got a cool place in town, and New York has many 
that have vegan cheese on the menu, Ethiopian food, split peas and lentils, check out my website for tips on what to eat and where to eat. I have a restaurant section, I have a recipe section, I have a veg shopping guide, and an athlete section too. And don't think I don't watch your faces when I'm up here. That's what I do when I'm preaching. I'm watching all your expressions. How come when I talk about tofu and pizzas without cheese? Boy, catch a couple people in every classroom, start to wrinkle up their noses a little, eyes get a little wide and bulge and start glancing around the room with your friends like, tofu, is this guy crazy? <laughs> Tempe must be out of his mind. What the hell is Satan? Satan, by the way, not Satan, Satan. It is wheat meat. It is meat that is made from wheat. So how come tofu and even fruits and veggies are considered gross to most people, but meat? Time to break meat down for everybody. You got five components to meat. Blood, flesh, veins, muscles, and tendons. The cut up corpse of a dismembered body? How does meat not qualify as disgusting and gross to everybody? How in the world is a liquid? A liquid that oozes out of a cow's udder, a secretion that's loaded with pus that drips from an animal's body. How is this not considered gross? Oh, and let me tell you about the pus and the cow's milk. It'd be my pleasure. When you hook machines up to the udders of cows three times a day to suck them dry, those machines cause massive amounts of infections and irritations on the inside and outside of the udder. Then when you add all the bovine growth hormones, and all the genetic engineering that's been done to a cow's body to make sure she produces huge amounts of milk, which always leads to another infection, the machine doesn't know what not to suck out. Pus and mucus and infections right into the milk. And yes, milk is pasteurized. But exactly when did pasteurization become a removal process? Last time I checked, it was a sanitation process, meaning you're only sanitizing pus. And if you want to look this up online, well, you don't think the dairy industry would ever use the word pus when they write about this problem in their own trade journals, do you? Now they're going to deceive you again. Look up the scientific term for pus. Somatic cell count. S-O-M-A-T-I-C. Oh, and let's talk about some other disgusting things that you guys love to eat. Did you know that the backside of a bird is called a cloaca? C-L-O-A-C-A. -A. It was the opening scene in the video. You can pop that back in if you want to see it. Uh, it's one hole. It is one hole, but it serves many purposes. It's the poop hole. It's the pee hole. It's the vaginal fluid hole. And it's the hole where your omelets and scrambled eggs come from. Yeah, I remember back in the day, I used to love my scrambled eggs with shit sprinkles, urine splatter, and goo juice all over it, too. Because, you know, when you crack that shell over the bowl, all those microscopic particles fly every which way. And if you guys think it's normal and natural to eat something that's been marinating in feces and urine for hours and hours, I got a brand new challenge for everybody. I always like to have a new challenge every single semester. This is the egg challenge. When you get home from school later today, I want you to go to the bathroom. Don't flush though. Then I want you to stroll on over to the kitchen, open up the fridge, grab yourself an egg, take it back to the toilet. Drop it in. If you even have the courage to stick your hand in there and grab it back out, and you can wash it when you're done, bleach it, do whatever you want to it, are you still gonna wanna eat it? And that's your own shit. That's your waste. Now you're talking about a hen that you don't even know her butthole? And what about vomit? Come on, you guys love vomit. You adore some vomit in, on, and all over your food. Better give this one a pretty name. No, no one's gonna wanna buy and eat vomit unless we call it honey instead. Honey comes directly from a bee's stomach. It's regurgitated right through a bee's mouth. You can look that up with any wildlife biologist, but nobody wants to eat bee vomit nut Cheerios. We want honey nut Cheerios, so we lie to ourselves and play euphemism games. The standard diet of a meat, dairy, and egg eater is blood, flesh, veins, muscles, tendons, cow secretions, things that come out of a hen's ass, and bee vomit. And we're not done yet. I'm not going to let you off the hook that easily while I got you here today. Because we top it all off, in my opinion. Because every single year when people start cooking turkeys for the holidays. 
Boy, people take a dead turkey, carve out a really big hole in that dead turkey's ass, take some stuffing, and shove it inside their dead empty ass, and use their little dead ass as an oven to bake some bread. Somebody else's dead empty bacteria laden ass to make bread? Ass bread? And people think vegans are weird? Because we eat tofu? I tell people one of my favorite meals nowadays, yams and barley. Hook me up with some yams and barley for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and I'm a happy guy. I know how most people are, though. I tell them this, and they're like, what? You just eat vegetables and grains for dinner? Yeah, I don't know, man. That's kind of weird. <laughs> okay. But somebody else's rib cage sitting on your plate, that's not weird? Severed legs, sliced up thighs, and mutilated breast on your plate isn't weird and doesn't make you think twice? Is bestiality weird to anybody? Doing sexual things with animals? Because I used to think everybody thought so, but not even close, my meat, cheese, milk, egg-loving friends. Because you engage in carnivorous bestiality on a daily basis. Sometimes multiple times a day. You eat things that come out of a hen's ass and shove things into a turkey's ass. You eat breast, legs, and thighs, and then you pay somebody else to sexually molest a cow and squeeze her nipples for you so you can steal her milk. Man, you guys are obsessed with bird asses and cow tits. Enough already. Seriously? Is it possible to step into the 21st century? and stop mimicking the behavior of cave men and cave women. You got a choice today. When you leave this room, you can choose to become radically kind, to never intentionally harm another animal for breakfast, lunch, or dinner ever again. These animals have never violated you or taken advantage of you in any way. The least you can do is return the favor. Or Stay radically cruel. Keep the status quo as is. Make sure animals have their babies stolen from them. Make sure their horns are cut off, beaks sliced off, testicles ripped out. Make sure they're raped. Make sure they never experience one drop of human kindness. And make sure there's a knife in their throat every second, of every minute, of every hour, of every day, for eternity. I hope you make the right choice. Isn't it rough enough being an animal on this planet with us around? As we claim everything for us? The land is ours. We pollute the air, the water, destroy the forest and the mountains. Do we have to maximize the cruelty that they already endure by eating them on top of it all? You want to talk about pouring salt into somebody else's wounds. 98%, and I want to leave you with this stat, 98% of animals who are abused and killed on this planet are abused and killed by the meat, dairy, and egg industries. The least we can do is minimize the cruelty by living a vegan lifestyle. I want to thank you guys for listening. I do appreciate the open minds I saw out there today. Let's do some Q&A right now. I think we still have about 15 minutes for a Q&A session.